you know, they, they do. And, the, and I was with it. I was like, all right, this is a good number. I like to see where this is going. But then the rabbit started, started doing the running man. <laughs> well, the other one is DJ. And man, they got a rabbit out there. DJ Green Bunny, man. <laughs> they got a rabbit out there. There you see him conjuring up a spell or something. But the earlier, they, had, they, they got him on the wheels of steel with the headphones. <laughs> Hey everyone, support our Patreon, which helps us to continue bringing you our live streams, videos, and podcasts while bringing you new content such as exclusive live streams and animated shorts. We're telling you about an interview that's coming up from a certain legendary ex-Disney animator out there. You might know him, all you animation aficionados out there. You know what I'm talking about when I say... All both of you. Oh, well, all both of you, though. <laughs> yeah, I tell you what, both of you, let's see here. You say Glenn, you say King. Glenn <laughs> King, Glenn <laughs> King. <laughs> Glenn King. Who in the animation community, in the business, is truly a legend. Uh, this man has worked on so many classic animated movies for Disney. They're masterpieces such as Beauty and the Beast. Mm -hmm. uh, he, in fact, he's the one that uh, he's the one that animated the Beast. Didn't he do something on Little Mermaid? Yeah, yeah. I think he was like, you know, he was there for that renaissance mm -hmm. that was coming through. He has his own movie that he directed that came out on Netflix. It will be in theaters. I hear from Mr. Thomas mm -hmm. over here. I think they're going to do that thing where they put it in theaters. I and, think so. And, uh, and on Netflix. But we got a very early sneak peek at this. And I actually watched this and couldn't even say anything because uh, we got it so early. It was on embargo. Mm -hmm. Embargo was lifted a couple of days ago, and now that we can tell you all about his motion picture, Over the Moon. This is uh, about a little Chinese girl, 12-year-old Chinese girl, her and a little rabbit, and a little girl, Fei Fei. And, you know, always going looking at her family, talking about, it. hey, well, I'm, that goddess up in the moon, man, you think she real? And all of me, like, girl, you're 12 years old. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we just tell you that shit to put your ass to sleep. And to, and, to, and to stop getting on our goddamn nerves. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you mean that scene is like, yeah, because they got. I mean, apparently Chinese mom, Chinese grandmothers are like black grandmothers because she, they, because the the the, the Chinese, uh, uh, it was an old Chinese woman, right? And I, I guess she's, you can't see here, but it's an old Chinese woman here, and she said she looked at the table and said, "This girl still believing that shit." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I think it was kind of all of them saying that. Yeah. <laughs> And it, but she's like, you know what? Y'all looking at me like I'm crazy. I'll show you. I'll show you I'm not crazy. I'm going to build a rocket ship out of toys, <laughs> hit that track out there, and fly to the moon. And I'm going to bring back a, a selfie <laughs> with the goddess on the moon. Everybody's like, no, that's not crazy at all. Sit your ass down. <laughs> I feel like you're burying the lead here, though. <laughs> well, who was that? Because to me, the story is about, look, it's, it's a typical Disney thing where the mom dies. Yep. And then... After some years, the dad is like, listen, I got to get something else going. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> and <laughs> Fei Fei is just not having it with this new woman. Oh, yeah. No. Cause, cause Fei Fei is looking over like, uh, yeah, she's cute, but why is she here? Yeah. Why y'all hugged up? What the fuck? Oh, hell no. Yeah. Oh, hell no. I know you ain't trying to replace my mom. Yeah. I want to let you know daddy been hitting some on the side, but now, <laughs> yeah. now it's time to let you know. <laughs> Hey, you, you had two years of daddy right here. Daddy, hold this. <laughs> so I tell you what, you go build your rocket. Daddy gonna sit over here and get some ass. And <laughs> yeah, whatever it takes to get out of my way. I go to the moon. His, his daddy's all sheepish, but he ain't like, yeah, but I ain't getting rid of her. Yeah, though. daddy played by John Cho. Daddy yeah. said, shit, I'm still looking good too. Yeah. Shit. Yeah, yeah, baby, fly to the moon. Just get the hell out of daddy's way. <laughs> they killed mama quick too, didn't they? They did. Mm -hmm. I'm just getting to know her. I'm like, oh, I love mama. Damn. He ain't even getting no, no sad send off or nothing. Are we sure this isn't a Disney movie? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he took a lot of cues from Disney, though. Let's go ahead and take a look at this trailer from Over the Moon, and we'll be right back with our review. It's not a silly myth. It's real. Right, Papa? <clears throat> uh. <laughs> you Damn, when the animals even look at you like you crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that frog looked like that. That crazy bitch, your owner. You might want to. Yeah, rib I know. yeah you, you might want to rib it. Get out of here. <laughs> so, so that's who you live with, huh? <laughs> that rabbit's rethinking that right now. Besties forever, forever. Uh, 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 uh. Chicka, chicka. 
What you think about the animation in this? I like. I tell you what, I think this looks great. I don't know oh, what you oh, feel about it. I, I thought it looks fantastic. No, this is for the budget that that they have for this, uh, and also this being something on Netflix. I thought this looked incredible, man. I'm impressed, man, with what they did. I mean, look, as I said, this is from Glenn King, so I don't think the animation or the art direction is going to be a uh, you know, a problem here at all. I mean, you can go in expecting that, and, I, if, and if you do, I think that they pretty much meet your expectations with the uh, artwork here. I'll tell you what I like about the animation so much here is that, first of all, uh, it's so many different styles throughout mm -hmm. the, the movie, and yet it all works together. You know, one of the things I was really impressed with here was uh, was the family stuff that they that they did. Uh, man, I'm gonna look. Oh, that all that food, that food looked this movie incredible. Yeah, it's it's like sure, it's great animation and and songs and all this, <clears throat> but there's a lot of food porn in this movie it when it is. starts. I mean, I I'm not even lying to y'all. The food that the cartoon food in this looks so amazing. When this was done, I immediately went and got some Chinese. Uh, yeah, of course that put would. me in the mood and got mad when it didn't look like that. <laughs> But they captured the whole feeling that, you know what, no matter what the culture is, and you get family together, everybody loves to eat, yeah. everybody loves to talk shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that yeah. and they caught that well with this. Voice, she didn't try to leave Hoi behind. She misses Hoi and cries for him every day. Girl, why don't you just sit your ass down and eat? I know. Quit they're, bothering they're, everybody. And they're making me hungry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sitting up here, twelve year old ass talking about some chick on the moon. You gonna go see her. Just sit your ass down and eat. You know something I, I really like about this family gathering is that they're all adults, and she's you know she's flitting around doing all this. Yeah, but they all know that like you're just mad because your daddy has a girlfriend. Like yeah. they, they acknowledge like yeah, that's, that's that's what she's upset about. Yeah, they, they don't. But that's the thing; they don't even acknowledge her. I mean, yeah, they they don't say it to her face, <laughs> but just with knowing looks between them, they like. Yeah, we know it. It plays about. out like like real adults with kids. Yes. It's like, look, don't don't just don't pay no attention. Yeah, to her. yeah, exactly. Coming Ignore in here, they're be trying to eat she up here with this silly shit. Just, you know, ain't, ain't, ain't nobody like, oh, honey, the goddess in the sky. I'm sure if you say she's real, and no, they're like, no, nah, we eating. Just <laughs> get, get from over me. <laughs> Sit your little narrow ass down somewhere. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, you know, I like that, and and you know the the stuff on the moon. I really liked. Uh, you know, again, that's where it, that's where it changes. Uh, as far as the look of it, I really enjoyed the stuff on the moon. You know, the moon is just one giant fluorescent gummy rave that's happening, and you know, I enjoyed looking at this the whole time. And before I forget, let me mention that. You know, again, the reason why it looks so well is because Glenn Keane is such a such a great uh, draftsman. You know, that's why he's such a great animator. Mm -hmm. He uh, he in, in won an Oscar for that. Just have to give him credit for you know his visuals because. Uh, a lot of people, you might have heard about this when uh, Kobe Bryant uh, tragically died recently. Uh, he was the one that directed what they won the Academy Award for, him and Kobe Bryant, Dear Basketball. Dear Basketball. I knew one thing was real. I fell in love with you. You know, the problem here, of course, is not the artwork at all, you know, and giving this guy's background. Uh, I, I do have a problem with the movie. Uh, the story, yeah. I just, yeah, I, I don't know. You know, I, you, I, you probably like this much more than I did. I might be getting a little bit harsh on this, but I, it, this played a little bit too fast and loose for me, with the story. Uh, you know, I, uh, I feel like they, the, being that this guy came from Disney, I think that he took some of the most generic parts of the Disney formula. And just made almost a highlight reel of that with those things. Uh, you know, but this, to me, if you want to narrow it down, this looks like the most generic parts of, of, of Frozen and Coco. It's like if you took Frozen, if you took Frozen and had the, had the same, uh, if you took the music of Frozen, of Frozen, you had the same beats, the highs, the lows, those dramatic crescendos and whatnot, uh, the same thing where, you know, some girl looks in the sky and the camera goes, goes around her, you know, they, it feels like they did that. It feels like they created a, a musically, a, they created a Frozen knockoff with the colors of Coco. With Coco, one of the things, I mean, Coco had everybody crying at the end. Mm -hmm. You know, this movie just can't capture 
the same emotional resonance as Coco or even uh, Frozen. I, you know, I, I felt like, man, this is a, uh, this, this, this reminds me of all these movies from the nineties that tried to be Disney. Mm -hmm. They, they copied a lot of those same elements from Disney, but just could not get the storytelling down. They knew all the things that they did, that, that were the big bright spots, but didn't know how to connect everything with characters and a, in a story. Jesus, what would you do to me, man? <laughs> don't, don't blame me. Martin is like, Martin's looking at me dying. He's like, Martin yeah. loved this uh -huh. movie. He's like, I knew uh, you didn't like this shit. She, yes. Yeah, she's talking. Yes. <laughs> How much did you not like this that's movie? Why, that's why I check my watch. I'm like, all right, he should be out in five, you know, four, three, two. And this movie's just <laughs> bland. And <laughs> my <laughs> But it's, it's, somebody said you smoking that dank. <laughs> no, nah, man, I don't know what's going on with me today. Um, yeah, and it's too bad because it started out strong. But I mean, I don't know. Uh, how did you feel about everything? Uh, I felt it started out strong. Uh, I wasn't crazy about the songs. I was like, oh, this is a musical musical, like yeah. Frozen. And the songs were not grabbing me. And what you say about it, feeling like a bit of Frozen, a bit of Coco. I also felt some Moana in there. Yep. So With the goddess and everything. Yeah. So I was like, <clears throat> all right, it's a bunch of those things. And, um, you know, and we're dealing with, with, with myths, so I'm not going to hang on to, like, you can't do that. You know, a rocket ship could never do that. Or how do you have gods in space? I'm like, no, no, that's not what this is about. Um, and you know the 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 family was seeing them like that was so much personality in the family. It was too bad we had to leave that just to go with Fei Fei and her yeah. animal friends. Yeah. You know? um, and the the annoying little brother, which we just saw in Abominable. Um, I mean, he wasn't a little brother, but you know, the little kid that's along. Um, and I was just, and I was I felt pretty much like you did up until they get to the moon and they meet Change. Yeah. And. That whole sequence with uh, Philippa Sue from uh, from Hamilton as as Changa and, and her singing and that whole musical number, I was like, "Oh, hold on now, now <laughs> now we got a musical number here." And I was like, I was bobbing my head along to it and going with it, and the whole new art style that comes in, and then suddenly I was with it. I was like, you know what, this Changa character, I I'm digging her. Uh, the the quest they got to go on. Not all that original, and I am one who doesn't like when animators make characters too simple, like my, like my hatred for the minions. Yeah. So I'm like, you guys are taking shortcuts. And they do here, but the way they light them up, it all works cohesively. I think it starts strong. You see the bond with uh, Fei Fei and her, and her mother and father. Mom dies. And what, and what I like about what I like about her mom, well, I don't like her mom dying, but one of the things that I really appreciate them doing is that when mom dies, uh, they don't try too hard to make you cry. No, they don't. They don't. You know, it's very matter of fact. They're not trying to pull a. They're not, they're not trying to pull a up. They're not trying to make you cry. They're just trying to get into the store. And I appreciate they're not doing. There's never a moment where Fei Fei is like, "I want my mother. You're not my mother." And she runs out and Fei Fei, Fei Fei. You know, they don't do any of that stuff like that. Yeah. You know, this is it's. I have to say I like Fei Fei because she handled it. She handled it pretty well. She, she was does. very mature. About she doesn't it. like the fact that her her dad is dating a new woman. But she's not all in that woman's grill and being a brat. She never looks at her and says, "Bitch, you're not my mother." Yeah. You know, it's not none of that. She's actually polite when you know to the mother to her face. Now when the door is shut, <laughs> like, oh, yeah. I'm gonna kill her. <laughs> Watch your back. Excuse me. I know I said good night, but but yeah, man, they don't try to pull any of that. It's just her and her dad, and it's cool. And uh, and and to be honest with you, when the woman does come into the picture, the other woman. Uh, I, I I understand why Fei Fei is feeling a little bit out of sorts because that little brother's crazy. Yeah. The moment she re the moment she meets this dude, the first thing he does when he introduces himself, he says, "Watch me run through this wall," and he knocks himself the. F <laughs> you ain't ready. and we were all waiting to just kind of like, well, we know this ain't gonna happen. So. Right. Right. If if a kid like that came to your house, you'd be thinking like, "Oh, I can't wait till he goes home." Yeah. Only to find out like, oh, well, he might end up being your brother. Yeah. This hey, is my bull, home. Bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Chin is his name. Yeah, Chin. You want to see me run through this wall? Watch. And we just sit back. And I just, um, I say, I can't wait to see this shit. Shit, like, like run, 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 run. <laughs> shit. <laughs> it's like, yeah. All right, girl. Good luck. <laughs> Once she's gone, 
that's where things go everywhere. Because then that's when we start getting in this whole plot about going to the moon and everything. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think, uh, you know, the movie, once mom is out the picture, the movie is spending so much. It's, this is what I mean by quick and loose. You know, I don't really give a whole lot of background on why things are happening, but we got to get there. Yeah. That, no, you're right about that. I don't know why we right here right now hanging out with these chickens, but <laughs> okay. We here. On to the next. And right when you start to like, hey, so what you guys about? Oh, come on. We got to go. I was like, all right. There's no real character development for any of these things to happen. Um, for example, with the with this whole thing of going to the moon with Fei Fei, she... Uh, it just happens. Yeah. There's, Fei Fei, she builds a rocket and goes to the moon. They let you know that it's probably not a fantasy. She builds a rocket. And the only way they explain it is that, well, her teacher says she's smart in school. We never got, and I know this is kind of cliche, but I rather would have had, had this where she was a tinkerer. You know, maybe she was doing stuff where the whole village was getting mad at us because she was always blowing up something. Uh -huh. But it would give us some context as to how she can build this rocket instead of just looking on the internet and ordering some parts from Amazon. Right, right. You know, is she Tony Stark? <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, is she genius Tony Stark level? You know, I don't know. Uh, and the whole time we actually done, did you think this? The whole time we're watching her actually build this rocket, like this girl gonna kill herself. Yeah, I was thinking that. <laughs> 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 that's all that's gonna happen. Yeah, I was like, okay, this is her first attempt. But let's let's see how she eventually gets there. And they're like, oh, she she just did it. She just did it, and she actually is about to kill herself until the moon goddess saves her. And that's another thing, because you know, I mean, I, it it would be fun if we did actually see her, you know, building the rocket and doing things a little bit more than what we see in the movie. I actually like the the, the 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 design of the rocket is a big rabbit. Yeah. I like there. I mean, there's so many small ideas that if they had if they had actually gave us again more background, man, that would have been like nice touches that worked so sure. well. Sure. But I mean, you know, look when you're Pixar and you got the budget, you do that. Yeah. No, I guess. I don't even like when she's saved because again, at the point at that point, I still don't know if, if this is a fantasy. I know she's about to die until a big green beam comes down and two big ass. Uh, gummy orange lions come in and and save her and escort her back to the moon, which is uh which is cool. Again, like I say, the designs are cool with that. Uh, but at the same time, I have to say, okay, again, why? Why did the goddess just all of a sudden just save her? Because there doesn't seem to be any real emotional connection there other than I really believe in the moon goddess. But I'm sure a lot of people because it's a holiday. Well, it's a holiday, and uh, you know she was there. I mean. It's not like people are going to the moon much anymore. I guess that's true. And she's <laughs> like, like, all right, you come. You, damn. you you bringing me something. Man, she's serious about this. I guess I better get her. <laughs> she got something she want to say. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, and and turns out Fei-Fei does have something the goddess wants. Yeah. You know, my whole take on this was that she did actually blow herself up. She blew her. She died before she ever left the ground. And this whole thing is just a death hallucination. This whole thing. <laughs> I mean, I'm not thinking she she died. I'm thinking maybe she blew herself up, and it's one of these because there's also you know hints of the Wizard of Oz here. Yeah. And, and had she woken up going like, "Oh, you mean it was all a dream?" That would have worked. I'm thinking that the rest of this is just a death hallucination. <laughs> She's on the ground, crispy as hell, <laughs> looking like Stormfront. <laughs> yeah, they look like Stormfront. <laughs> Down there talking Chinese. <laughs> the happiest day was with my mother when we made <laughs> dumplings together. And her ass is just dying. <laughs> this thing, it like it looked like a whole hour and a half. This, this was like this was two minutes before she had her last breath. <laughs> I love the Chinese theme here, as far as the design uh, with the with the movie, the art direction with the Chinese theme that they got going on. Um, and what's her name? Changi. Yeah, Changi. 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 Who? Is a goddess who took some immortal pills or something, and so she died. I mean, she so she stays alive, but her lover died, and so she's got this eternity and kind of this loneliness, and that is why uh, I guess uh, 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 Fei Fei feels such a relation to her because she's lonely too. She spends a lot of time dressed up in the Chinese garb, traditional looking. So when uh, it's 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 a good number, 
But I just thought, like, you know, this is this this doesn't feel really authentic to this character. At least for me, it felt like, all right, we we putting in some uh, pop music because the kids love K-pop out there. Maybe they'll be confused and think that she's Korean instead of Chinese or something. But it is a very pop thing to do because the music is very modern. It feels like to me, like, all right, this is we, we got to put something in there to uh, get the kids dancing and appeal to them. You know, they, they do, and, and I was with it. I was like, all right, this is a good number. I'd like to see where this is going. But then the rabbit started, started doing the running man. <laughs> well, the other one is DJ. Hey, man, they got a rabbit out there. DJ Green Bunny, man. <laughs> they got a rabbit out there. There you see him conjuring up a spell or something. But the early, they, had, they, they got him on the wheels of steel with the headphones. And he's out there DJing his ass off. And I was like, oh, I don't know, maybe it's a dude. He's mainly a dead mouse or something. It's a dude in a costume. I don't know. And and uh, and Chang, she doesn't. I mean, she goes from the 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 dance dance revolution disco diva thing to something that's a mix between that and traditional, and then into very traditional. Yeah, no, it, like I said, man, it's not my problem with the number itself. It's just these things happen in pieces, and they don't really connect very well to me. You know, it's like a that is a it, it's a it's it. It, it's an impressive number, man. And it's not a bad song to get your foot tapping and everything, but, uh, and it looks beautiful. I, I, you know, I just, I just felt like it wasn't connecting to anything other than kids like pop music. There are so many things here to indicate to me that they, that they didn't really have a strong way to thread these things together because later on, outside of the dance number, like some of these things I could start to take, but I'm like, man, none of this stuff really, y'all didn't really have a real plan to make like a real story here. You just, you just bringing stuff in now. Uh, they're just bringing in like we gotta bring in we gotta bring in the odd characters, and that's where we get the biker chicks, in who are actual chickens on motorcycles. That was a bad pun that they they ran way too far. Oh with. Jesus, man! Besides being a bad pun and an angry bird lawsuit waiting to happen, <laughs> people get go, you, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, look at that, yeah oh, no, I know. Look, I know. look at look at your boy right here. I know. Uh, oh wait a minute, hold on. Let me. I didn't pull it up. Hold on, cause y'all need to see this shit. Look, look, look at your boy right here. And then look at your boy <laughs> right know. here. Come on. I know. I know. I'm like, come on, y'all. <laughs> it's well, he's a mixture of all these fools over here. Well, one of them is smiling. <laughs> <laughs> a mixture of all of them. Even he, 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 he knows he's like, shit, we about to get sued. And <laughs> he's like, I'm just gonna look straight ahead. <laughs> <laughs> and, and pretend like I don't see what's happening. When I talk about picking up the formulas from Disney movies and just, just putting them in there with no real reason. We, we, uh, uh, Fei Fei don't have just one sidekick. She's, you know, she fills in the slots for everything. Uh, we got the, uh, we got the, uh, uh, the cute bunny right here. Bungie. Uh, Bungie. You know what? It's actually, uh, because I'm seeing here, you know, you, uh, she has two sidekicks. It's really a lot more because you got Bungie. But then you, you, it's it's more if you count Bungie and her little brother's like Chin's frog. Uh, but after that, I guess she still had a quota to fill because at that point, so you got the it's actually four, four sidekicks. So you get you get Bungie, yeah, Bungie the cute rabbit, and then you get the frog with Bungie. That's two. Bungie, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, the frog is owned by Chin. Chin counts as a sidekick, the, the the annoying little brother. Sure, sure. And then they're like, well, shit, we got one more slot to fill. Anybody, anybody, anybody. Hey, I could do the obnoxious sidekick. And then you got, uh, what's his name? Gobi? Yeah, who was Gobi. Who's a, 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 a green jelly dog <laughs> on the like moon. like a hedgehog. But uh, yeah, I couldn't tell what he was, which is fine, voiced by King Jong. King Jong, which not, I didn't. Not doing his, his fake black voice. For a change. That's why I didn't mind the character yeah, I, so I, much. Yeah, I liked him. I was all right with him. It was like he's just there again to fill a space. I would tell you this: uh, this dog is not as annoying as I thought. I wouldn't tell him, uh, you know, that's because they have so many things going on. They can't bring the dog in as much. Plus, they bring him in so late. Yeah, I, I think that's what. Man, you hit it. That's what the problem is. Uh, it goes back to these just aren't really strong characters because they either get introduced so quickly or they get introduced late. Yeah, well, like especially in the, in the. In the instance of Gobi, like we're so late in the plot, and the plot's super simple. It's it's yeah. ridiculously simple. It's like there's not much to it. So bringing him in, then it's like okay, he's kind of just a, a distraction on how 
<laughs> how little there is to the, the to the story. I'm, y'all must have not caught the beginning of the review either. Somebody say, "Is that dog green dog? <laughs> oh no, wearing a diaper." <laughs> Hi, I'm Gobi. What's your name? I'm Fei Fei. I'm keeping the sweet moon pants. Yeah, people know that's an adult diaper too. Yeah. <laughs> Probably all kind of green piss and shit in there by now. <laughs> Somebody said that dog is 100% radioactive. <laughs> that girl is getting cancer right now. <laughs> Standing next to that dog. It's not terrible. I just don't, I don't even think it's, I just, I would, great would be a long way from what I would use with this. I would say that it's, it's not even good. It's okay. As I was saying earlier, man, this it's for somebody who worked at Disney, they feel like those movies from the nineties, like Quest for Camelot and mm. other films. Well, you know, with better artwork, mm-hmm. better animation, uh th- th- it's a gorgeous film. But you know, those movies that said, All right, we have we have the sidekicks, we have the musical numbers, we have the fairy tale story going on, but they got everything in there but Disney's storytelling capabilities. Sure. And that is that's what's happening right here. Uh, you know, this this had a, b- a great beginning. I actually think it has a cool ending. You know, just a very simple, quick, cool ending that this thing would have been bookmarked very well, bookended very well, had the the middle really had some great substance. But it's just right now where, <clears throat> you know, it's not, this is breezy, wacky fun. Uh, I give it a, give it a high rental, man. It's, uh, it's all right. Uh, well, once again, I feel like I say this every week. While not discounting what you say, I still like this uh, a lot better than you did. Uh, and you're right. It's not great. Uh, it barely counts as good, but there are great things about it. I, I think the animation is stellar. Uh, it, it it borrows from too many sources. Yeah. Like like we've, we've named so many of them. And even sitting here, I thought about other things it takes from. Yeah. Uh, probably one of the biggest comparisons is going to be to Coco in as much as it takes this culture and really makes it feel authentic, like they they really did their research on bringing that to you. It's not Coco, though, because Coco made me cry, and this is not doing that. Oh, yeah, no, Coco. And I swear. I was with my wife, and I had to cover my eyes, and I had oh, to put yeah. on, like, no, those no, horse a lot of people, blinders. I, was, I sat next to a dude who was inconsolable. <laughs> Do I know him? Yeah, 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 Mike Rioja's. He, he could oh, not re- stop Oh, really? Crying. Yeah, like, after it was over, I sat there with him. He just could not stop crying. Uh but I swear, right after I said that, this gets to the ending, and damn if my eyes didn't well up. I was like, you son of a bitch. I was barely paying attention, and you got me. It, it, it really did. It, it, it hit me with, with emotion on it. And I, I give it a lot of points for being able to do that, especially when it seemed like it could not do it whatsoever. It's, a, it's, it's, an, it's an enjoyable flick, and I, I feel like it's a matinee. Oh, boy, you hate me for this. because I. Well, you already said a rental. Yeah, no, I no, I already said a rental. I was gonna say I I like trolls better than this. Really? Yeah, trolls yeah. too. Trolls too. Yeah, uh, that which is something else I would say it kind of borrowed from. Yeah, yeah, no, it did very much. Trolls had everything that this had. It had different styles, different designs. Had musical numbers. Uh, yeah, man, I thought I thought trolls did a better job than this did. Somebody said, "What about best move?" Uh, Best animated movie of the year. They said, Martin, you saw Troll Land. Come on. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. How could I forget? 